In this video, we discuss about continuous optimization. We had earlier a discussion about optimizing models where the objective function is linear. In this video, the focus is going to be on more general, potentially non-linear objective functions. We looked at optimization problems earlier in this course and we studied them with discrete tools. We looked at linear programming models where the goal was to optimize a function f subject to constraints that came in the form of linear inequalities. In this video and the next, we will look at optimizing continuous functions with the help of tools from continuous math. In this video, we focus on unconstrained optimization and we take the case of constrained optimization in the next video. So the problem here is to optimize a function f, um, where f is a continuous function, and in fact we only focus here on the case where f is differentiable. We have the single variable case where the optimum is going to be found among the solutions of the equation df to dx equals to zero. And to check whether a certain solution is a minimum or a maximum, we have to consider the second derivative test or some numerical approaches. The multivariable case uh, is where we have uh, several variables x1 to xn and in this case we will consider the system of partial derivative equations df to dxi um, equals to zero for all i from 1 to n. And to check whether a certain solution is a minimum or a maximum we have to look at the second derivative or simply just simulate uh, or numerically integrate around these um, uh, points. Here is an example. We have a problem of min minimizing the daily cost of delivery and storage. Um, in particular, we have a chain of gas stations and we want to determine how often and how much gasoline to deliver to the various stations. So in terms of costs, we have a delivery cost D in addition to the price of the gasoline delivered. And we have also a storage cost uh, and, and we are going to assume that there is a constant storage cost S per gallon per day. And we know also the demand rate, and we are going to assume, in fact, a constant demand rate R per day. Here are the variables. We want to know about the quantity of gasoline to be delivered periodically, and we want to know about the time in between two deliveries. And the objective, obviously, is to minimize the daily storage and delivery costs, and, of course, never run out of gasoline. Here is a simple initial idea for how to run this gasoline station. We could have an initial delivery and we could then wait until it runs out, then have a second and let's assume to simplify things that it's an instantaneous delivery and again wait, wait until it runs out and so on. So according to our model we will have a linear depletion of the stock with the slope given by the demand rate R. Visually, the evolution of the stock looks like this. So let's calculate the costs of running the gas station according to this model. We are given the delivery cost, say, D, and the demand rate, say, R, and we are to calculate the daily storage costs. So let's calculate first the storage cost in between two deliveries, meaning from when the storage is full until it gets empty. The amount of gasoline we have to keep in between two deliveries can be seen in this plot as the area of the triangle formed under the slope. So this means that we will have over this period of time um, gasoline to store so the gasoline to store is the area of this triangle and that's going to be Q times T over 2 since the cost of storage per gallon is S the cost of storing this gasoline is going to be S times QT over 2. 
The question now is how much should we order to keep up with the demand? In other words, what should Q be the amount that we order regularly so that the demand rate R is met? The demand, demand rate is really the slope of the curve. The higher the demand, the more abrupt the curve is. So R really is Q over T, or in other words, Q is R times T. So we obtain that really the cost of storage here, if I replace Q by RT, is SRT squared divided by 2. And when we are adding the delivery cost, we get that the cost per delivery cycle is D plus SRT squared divided by 2. And so the daily cost is going to be D divided by T plus SRT over 2. And so we finally get to the real question. How often should we order so that we minimize the daily cost? This can be formulated as minimize f of t, which is d over t plus srt over 2. Our approach is, as we have already seen in previous videos, to look at the zeros of the differential of f. And so we are going to have to solve the equation df to dt equals to 0. And when we calculate the differential here, we are going to get that this is minus d over t squared plus sr over 2 equals to 0. So that will give us a solution t equals square root of 2d divided by sr. Here is another example. Let's say that we have to maximize the profit of a company producing two new competing products. Let's say something like two versions of a computer. There are some fixed costs to prepare the launch of the two products. And there is also a cost per unit of product for each type of the product. There is also some revenue per unit of product for each type. But there is also a decline in the value of both products with each sold unit of either products. So the variables are going to be x1 and x2 standing for the number of products 1 and 2 that the producer is going to make. There are also some costs and prices and we will denote by f the fixed cost for preparing the launch of the two products by c1, c2 the manufacturing cost of one unit of product 1 and 2, p1, p2 the initial selling price of one unit of product 1 and 2. Now by a1 and a2 we will denote the decline in the price of x1, x2 with each sold unit of product 1. And by b1, b2 we are going to denote the decline in the price of x1, x2 with each sold unit of product 2. And the objective is going to be how much to manufacture to maximize the profit. And so after selling x1 units of product 1 and, and uh, x2 units of product 2, the prices of the two products are P1 of x1 x2 is whatever the price was in the beginning and then there is a decline and it's a decline caused by how much of x1 we have sold and it's a decline caused by how much of x2 we have sold and something similar for the price of the second product it's whatever we had in the beginning minus the decline caused by how much we sold of product 1 and the decline caused by how much we sold of product 2. So that's in terms of the price. And so the revenue that we got so far um, is going to be R times X1, X2 is really X1 times P1 
of x1, x2 plus x2 times p of x1, x2. And that's really x1 times p1 minus a1, x1 minus p1, x2 plus x2 times p2 minus a2, x1 minus b2, x2. And the cost is um, c of x1, x2 is the fixed cost plus how much we paid for producing x1, so c1 times x1 plus how much we paid for producing x2, which is c2 times x2. So the objective is maximize the function f of x1, x2, which is the revenue minus the cost. And so once again, the, the objective is to maximize the function f of x1, x2 is out of x1, x2 minus the cost of x1, x2, and, and the, the form of this function is written on this slide. Of course, our model is discrete. We are talking about units of some product, so x1 and x2 are integer numbers, but we are going to maximize the function as if it were continuous. And so in this case, we can calculate the critical point or the equilibrium by cal calculating these partial derivatives of f with respect to x1 and with respect to x2. And the expressions of these um, derivatives are, uh, are here. And we set them to zero to calculate the equilibrium point. To check whether the critical point is a maximum point, we can just employ some standard uh, uh, mathematical software to check the convexity or the concavity of the shape of f around this particular point. So if we do that, we are going to come up with a shape of this type. And we can see from this plot that the point we found is indeed one that maximizes the function, and we can report it as a solution to the problem.